Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started using project templates in Asana. Setting up templates is one of the best things you can do in Asana to create standardized checklists that outline the steps you and your team need to take to execute on a specific project. If you find that you're often missing steps or important things are being forgotten about, then having a template that includes all the important steps you need to take is a really useful thing to have. This is also one of the great ways that you can set up a standard operating procedure or SOP in Asana. And if you haven't already, check out my video, which I'll link up here on how I set up SOPs in Asana. Essentially, by writing down your process and putting it into an actual template, you can create both a project with a checklist and a written down process of how to actually execute on the project. The goal here is that you should be able to give this template to somebody on your team, maybe even somebody who's never even done the project before. And the template is detailed enough where they know what they need to do and the instructions are clear enough they know how to actually do the project. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or getting more out of Asana, maybe you want to improve the adoption within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Asana consulting options. To create your first project template, you can do this a couple of ways. Either if you have an existing project like this, so here's one that I've already set up for how to manage a client. I've set this up with phases for the major phases or stages of the project. I've got my tasks and milestones all in here ready to go. And if I come to the project menu, I can choose to save this existing project as a template and add it to my list of templates. The other option is if I go to one of my teams, like I'm going to go to this Asana demo and come down to my templates section, I can see all of my existing templates. And from here, I can start a new template from scratch. So let's pretend we're setting up a template for planning an event. So we're going to call this event planning template. I can also specify the privacy or how this template can be used. Uh, I can choose if I want to let anyone on my team edit this. Maybe anyone in the team can use it, but they can't edit it. Or I can make it completely private, so only people I invite to the template can use it or edit it. I generally recommend allowing people on your team to use the template. That's the whole point of this tool. But it is a good idea to restrict who can edit it because we don't want people changing or deleting things by mistake. Next, I'm going to go ahead and click Create Template. So now I have this blank project that I can start to build out. And there are a couple of building blocks I can use to set up my project. Now, if you haven't set up a project in Asana before, have a look at this other video that I made on how to get started using Asana for absolute beginners, where I explain some of the basics around using sections, tasks, and milestones. To run you through it briefly, you can organize your project into sections and it's really up to you to decide how are you going to use sections in this project. Often we use sections for things like the stage or phase of the project. So we might have a you know planning phase. Then I might have another phase or stage for um, production and marketing. And then um, for my event, we might have another section for stage three, event day tasks, and then we might have stage four, post event tasks. Really, I'm using the sections as a way of categorizing or breaking up the tasks into different areas. So I could do stages like this, or for another type of project, I might have the sections for things like the categories of work. Or you might have seen people do the typical Kanban style of planning where they have um, stages for to do, in progress, waiting, and then complete. So you're going to find that different projects lend themselves to different ways of being organized. Um, and again, check out my, my getting started video, which will help there. So once I've got my sections, I can then add the actual tasks to outline what are the steps that we need to do. And this is essentially where we can actually make this a checklist. So here we go. I've filled out some tasks in each of these sections uh, to create my checklist with the things that we need to do. Now, some of these tasks might be more important than others. And so we can highlight those by right clicking 
and then marking them as milestones. So milestones typically represent the important deliverables in a project or maybe important deadlines. Really, they highlight the most important parts of the project. When we achieve a milestone, that's a really big win for the project. We're really moving things forward. So I might mark this as a milestone here to show the event day and uh, maybe a milestone for tracking our progress later on. And now, if you are on the Asana Advanced subscription, you'll have access to portfolios. You can check out my video up here on how to use portfolios. And any milestones I add to this project, they are gonna show up on my portfolio timeline later on. So that's gonna be a really useful way if I'm looking at the status of more than one project at once, I can see which milestones we've achieved and what we have coming up. I can also break these tasks down into smaller steps using subtasks. So if I click on this task, schedule social media posts, I might want to schedule subtasks for X, Facebook, Instagram. And so I can create sort of a smaller checklist of things to do within this task. And in the task description, this is where I would put in the specific notes that detail how to actually do the task. This is, as I said in the beginning, where you would put in your standard operating procedure. So somebody who's never done this before can look at the notes and it's going to tell them what to do. So here's an example where I've provided clear details on how we schedule our social media posts a week before, four days, the day before, and so on. So I'm using Asana to clearly outline the expectations and what we need to do to complete this task. The next thing I would do in my template is start to assign tasks to people and apply due dates. Now with assignees, we have a couple of options. If you click into the assignee field, you can either assign a task to an individual on the team. And that way, when you use this template to create your actual project, this task here is always going to be assigned to this particular person. So me, for example. Or we can also use project roles to dynamically assign tasks to whoever we assign to be that role. So I can create a project role. Let's just create a role for um, project manager. So we've created that role and now I can assign the task to this role. When I use this template to create my live project, I get the option to decide who on my team is going to be the project manager for this particular project. And then all of those project manager tasks will be assigned to that person. With my due dates, I can assign tasks to be due a certain number of days before or after either the start date or the due date of the project. So when I create my template, the first thing I actually need to decide is, is this template, are the tasks in this template going to correspond to a start date where let's say the project is starting today, a task might be due one day after the start date, which would be tomorrow. Or I can have tasks be due corresponding to the project due date. So this is better for things like event planning where you're kind of working backwards from like a launch day or some due date in the future. And now I can say, right, this task is due X number of days before the due date of the project. So in this case, I'm going to say, right, the, the event day itself, that's going to be my project due date. And I'm going to base everything off of that. So if my event day here, this is going to be day zero. That's essentially the due date of my project. We're working backwards from the event day. So that is our project due date. And so then a task like plan the event goals and budget, maybe I want to do this 90 days before the due date of the project. So now if this is due, let's say I say my project is in um, three months from now, this plan event goals is going to be due 90 days before, so probably today. I can then continue going through my projects. So maybe booking event space, we need to do that maybe 60 days before the event. So I'm going to say 60 days before the project due date. I can also put date ranges on a task. So design stand layout and signage here. Maybe I'm going to do this from day 80 uh, to day, oh, uh, let's say day 80 to day 60. So from days 80 to 60 before the project due date, I'm going to work on that task. So that, that's the next thing I would do for this template is I would go through, make sure I've assigned my tasks to either a person or a project role, and I would put dates on everything. So what I've described there would be the essential steps that I would take when creating a template. 
So setting up your project with sections, tasks, subtasks, and milestones to break down the work and create your checklist. Make sure you have descriptions on your tasks so people know what they actually need to do and how to do the task itself, how to complete the work. And assign tasks either to a person or a project role and have clear due dates on all of your tasks. If you do this, you're going to define a really clear process that outlines how to actually complete and execute on the project. Now, we've really just scratched the surface here today. If you would like to learn how to take this to the next level using advanced features like custom fields, rules, forms, and even task templates, then check out my full Master Asana online course, where I have much more detailed video training on how to use these features in Asana. With my Master Asana support program, there's also options to book one-on-one -on -one consulting calls with my team. So if you want to have someone really hold your hand and help you figure out what is the best way to even set up my templates in Asana, we can get on a live Zoom call with you and help you through this process. Before I wrap up this video, let me show you an example of a more built out template. And let me show you how to use the template to set up your live project. Back in my team here, I have this website template. So here's an example of using a template to develop a website for a client. Uh, this is very typical for design um, and uh, creative agencies that we've worked with, very common use case for Asana. You can see, similar to my other example, I've got sections for outlining tasks that we need to do to set up the initial project, onboarding the client, developing the website, launching, and then further SEO optimization. I've got tasks and milestones to outline the steps we need to complete. Some of these tasks are actually set up as dependencies, so I can clearly highlight what needs to be done first before we can move on to another task. You can see I've assigned my tasks and I'm using various project roles for project manager, lead designer, developer, and even inviting the client themselves into Asana. And I've put dates on all of my tasks. If I click on the customize menu, this is where we can take the template to that next level. I've added some rules to automate the flow of tasks in my project. I've got a client support form that's built into this project, and I've created a task template for developing web pages in a standardized way. Now, once I'm ready to use my template, I can use it from a couple of places. Either if I click on the template from my team menu, I can click use template, or I find it a bit quicker to actually just click the create button start a new project, use template, and then now I can choose, there's my event planning template that I worked on before, and we're gonna choose use template. So I'm gonna give this a name, let's just say Auckland event 2024. Um, I'm gonna add this to my Asana demo team. And if you recall, this template, all the tasks correspond to the due date of the actual project or the, the event day. So let's say this event maybe is coming up a couple of months from now. <clears throat> maybe we're doing this later in the year. Let's just say November um, 30th, for example. So because I had my event day task as day zero, that task is gonna be due on this day. I'm working backwards from the event day. So let's click continue. And it's also gonna ask me to fill in the project roles. So I have my project manager role. I'm gonna say this is Lindsay on my team. She's my project manager responsible for this particular project. So I've allocated her to that role. And now we're gonna to go to the project. Asana is gonna take a minute to set up this project. If you have a large template with lots of tasks, don't be surprised if it does take a minute or two to populate. But here's mine now nearly ready to go. You can see this task here, or actually let's go to the event day task. This is due on the 30th of November because I said this was due on day zero, which is the due date of the project. So that's the 30th of November. And this task here, planning the event goal and budget, this is due 90 days before, which is the 29th of July. These other tasks here, their, their due dates have also populated. And the task, this task has been assigned to Lindsay because she is the project manager uh, that I have assigned to this particular project. Now, I just want to highlight a couple of important points here. Once I have my project set up and ready to go, I can add new tasks to the live project, and I'm only adding those tasks to that specific project. If I have other projects that I've also created from that same template, they're completely disconnected and separate. So I can use the template to get 
the majority of my tasks ready, but I can further customize and add additional tasks to that live project. The other important point to keep in mind is if you make changes to your template, you're only changing the template itself, and those changes are only gonna to apply to new projects that you create going forwards. Any existing projects that I've already set up will not inherit those changes. Now, if you would like existing projects to inherit those changes, maybe you change the tasks, or you add a new custom field, or rule, or a task template, we can add those to the existing projects using what's called a bundle. Now, this is a more advanced feature in Asana. It does require the Asana Enterprise plan. And if you would like help with bundles, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to help. So I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.